Hello viewers, SuperGT here. Welcome back to another episode of trying to beat the fastest car. On this episode, it happens to be the Toyota Supra in Group 3. And this is for the uh, Maggiore 4 lap race, race B. Okay, the importance of qualifying. Let me reiterate just how important qualifying is. I'm going to show you my best lap. I'm doing it in the best car, but in the race, I'm going to try to beat the best car in something different. So, coming up to turn one, you're looking for the 100 board and you're braking just after it, but before the shadow, before the end of the shadow. Use a lot of curb there. Through turn two, you can really abuse the yellow stuff here. So you're pretty much four wheels off the track. Two on the yellow, two on the red and white, and you're okay. Through this left-hander, kind of aiming for the point at the end of the curb. And that's actually true of a lot of corners here. You're aiming for the kind of the point at the end, at the very end of the curb, and that sees you out of the corners very nicely. Now down towards turn number five, this is a really difficult corner. The breaking point is fairly simple. You're just looking for the end of the curb on the left-hand side there, and that should see you in a little bit of a slide on the way in. But you can carry a lot of speed through if you get the line right. Keep over to the right-hand side as you shorten the distance here. Look for the curb on the right-hand side. Just break at the start of that. That sees you into this turn quite nicely. You can use a bit of the geo block on the inside of the curb. Through the curb here. And again, I went a little bit wide there, but aiming for the end of the point of the curb. Through the end of the S's flat out onto the back straight. So the S is uh, crucial to a good lap time here. So two tenths, uh, two tenths of a second out on my previous best. Breaking just uh, after this black. Uh, uh, monitor thing here and before the 50 that sees you into big banky boy quite nicely on the power as early as you can dare without going wider than the curb of course which is not ideal it's gravel flat out through this uphill chicane and i actually had to lift slightly as i didn't quite take enough curb you can go two balls on the grass two on the curb through the second chicane or second part of the chicane look for the two boards there breaking pretty much halfway between them and that sets you into this corner quite nicely. Again, two wheels on the geo block beyond the curb, and that's fine. And again, here, just two wheels beyond the curb, and that gets you through that turn quite nicely. Then towards the final corner, which is a really difficult corner actually to get right, breaking just before the 50 board on the right hand side, and two wheels all over the curb. And you can extend slightly out towards the extra tarmac beyond the white line. Now, that's a good lap of Maggiore. Maggiore. 55.7. There was a couple of mistakes in there. Um, that's a big mistake, 5 second penalty for smashing into the wall. And this is the car we're going to try to beat the Supra in, the Mercedes AMG. Now it's a car that has actually, uh, it's kind of gone on leap, leaps and bounds since the recent updates. And you can see just how many Supras there are in this race, I'm kind of surrounded by them. There is a R8 up in second place. As we get away from the line at the start of the race, 4 laps. Starting fourth, let's see what we can do. I've got the number one on my car. I am the highest rated player in the game, in the race. So let's see if we can move forward, ideally, as we come up against the Toyota Supra. So why is the Supra so good here? What, what is good about it? The one thing that I really noticed, and you will notice during the course of this race and the next race, is its straight line speed which makes it very hard to overtake if you're not in the Supra yourself. So going down towards Big Banky Boy at the end of the lap, or near, nearly towards the end of the lap, I suppose, is probably the best overtaking opportunity as it's a big long straight into a big braking zone. But the Toyota Supra has such good straight line speed that it is really difficult to get onto terms with it, as we'll see here. So I am in the slipstream of the Supra ahead although he is in the slipstream of the Audi ahead of him. And at this point, I'm actually losing time. I'm actually falling away from that Supra, such as the speed of it. And he's looking for the attack around the outside of the Audi. As they come through the turn, he's just going to run him out onto the gravel. And that's basically a home run for me. One of them hit, gets hit off, the other one gets a penalty for hitting the other one off. So you turn up in Italy and everyone's whacking each other off in some sort of demonic twisted way and it's only really helping me um, as I will now go up to second courtesy of this guy's penalty 
as long as I stay very close to him. So at this point here, really just trying to stick as close as I can, try not to minimize or try to minimize the time loss as the leader goes a little bit wide coming out of the final turn. Very easy to do that as you come across the line to end the first lap. Not really done too much, but it kind of just waited for the drama to unfold and let everyone smash each other off the circuit. So the penalty zone is just after turn four, so we're just coming up to it now. And this Audi is actually towing me quite nicely onto the back of the Toyota. That was the worry, that once this penalty was served, that the Toyota in the lead was too far ahead. So he's going to move over. He's not going to move over. I'm going to go through him, though. So we've been unleashed to try to catch up with the leader now, who is within the magical 0.8 second zone of suckage. As we come up the hill, up towards the S's, crucial set of corners this, as it leads out onto the back straight. And we'll see just in a moment exactly how good that car is in a straight line. So through the S's we go, fly through here. So we're ending the S's about six tenths of a second behind. And we actually got a better run up there, I think, as we are gaining. So into that slipstream, down the back straight, down to four tenths now. And then over the crest, down the hill didn't really gain too much, maybe two tenths at most, but I think he got a poor exit, so it's mostly down to his poor exit rather than my slipstream. And up the hill again, into that toe is crucial. If someone's quicker than you, as long as you're in the toe, you can gain a couple of seconds, or a tenth of a second, sorry, per lap. So David Perrell, he did a really good uh, track guide for this. Um, he did a 55.4 on his guide, or his... his um, He's faster lap is 55.4, a couple of tenths quicker than mine. So if you want further tips, and probably more detailed ones, go and have a look at his channel, David Perrell. Um, I've mentioned him about 4 billion times now by, by now, so you've probably already heard of him. But for those who haven't, go and have a look. Real life racing driver, and very quick on the game too. And you may well just pick up one little tip that might make you a little bit quicker. So if we turn one through turn two, you see right on the back of him now, as we come through the hairpin, and three seconds ahead of third. So we're doing okay at this point. It's really just a case of keeping that pressure up full Tottenham style and maybe forcing an error because it's so difficult. Even if I'm, let's say, less than half a second behind, the slipstream just isn't enough because that super is so quick in the line. It is just ridiculous. It's as if Paul Walker's driving and he's got infinite bottles of nitrous oxide and you just can't do anything about it. So it's quite tricky uh, to overtake this car, very tricky. And it's, very, it's a very good defensive mechanism having to, uh, high top speed uh, down the back straight. So again here, half a second behind, let's see how that gap changes. So he got a slightly better exit that time around and the gap's actually increasing at this point and then eventually now it's decreasing but only by maybe half a tenth is really not much at all so you need to be really within three or four tenths of that Supra to stand a chance or you just need to be driving the Supra yourself and uh, you'll be in with a good shout so this is very normal in Gran Turismo there's always going to be normally one car that just dominates most circuits on this occasion it is the Supra and to be honest though there are a lot of cars that people are driving uh, in Group 3 these days, uh, it does seem to be a little bit more varied than before. So people go for different cars. The AMG goes well here. Some people drive the Porsche, the Audi R8 going well as, as normal. But uh, it is the Supra, which is top dog this week. So we've kind of fast forwarded there. I've got my own burst of nitrous oxide to whiz around most of lap number three and four. And still just kind of hovering here this kind of distance half a second behind I just couldn't really get any closer at all so this guy's done a good job under pressure to not really make any cataclysmic errors and he's gonna stay ahead as long as he doesn't bottle it through the final couple of corners which we're coming up to here but he's got a nice safe margin now he shouldn't um, be in that frame of mind he should just bring it home and he's gonna do exactly that as we come around the last corner, it's going to be a second place, which isn't too bad actually. Started fourth, finished second. Is it possible to be that Supra? Yes, but you do need perhaps a very good grid slot, and depends who's in the race, I suppose. You can get the luck of sometimes no one turns up and you just kind of win by default. 
So there we go, second place, fastest lap actually, 55.9 in the race, somewhat slipstream assisted. But we go again, we must try for the second time, this time actually a little bit further back on the grid. Fifth place, loads of Supras, we've actually got a Hyundai there in seventh place, interestingly. The Audi R8 makes a reappearance up there in third. So, away from the line we go in one of the most twisted and demonic race starts you've ever seen. Away we go, the race is underway into turn one, nice and safe, as it normally is with the rolling starts, towards the front of the pack at least, anyway. And then lots of grass being taken by the car ahead. So it's kind of as you were in the previous race. Me up against a Supra driven by a Spaniard. Let's see if we can go about making some positions here. You can't always rely on the luck of people pushing each other off into the Shadow Realm and getting penalties. So on that last race, Things went my way. Things went my way. The guy in the lead made a mistake. I got onto the back of him. Here, a mistake for me, got into the back of him, and that's lost us both time, unfortunately. By the previous race, someone pushed each other off. They, two people pushed each other wide, get a penalty. I gained two positions for free. Get onto the back of the leader. Couldn't quite uh, go, for the, go for the win. But things mostly went my way in that race. This is an example where things might not always go your way. So, first off, a mistake from me going to the back of the Supra, not ideal, because what that really does is it pushes the guy in fourth off of the back of the guy in third, and it just means that we're off the, the slipstream train. And um, it's going to be very hard to kind of get back onto that train, especially when the guy in third is getting pulled along by the guy in second, who's getting pulled along by the guy in first. And once you're off the back of that slipstream train, things can get very difficult, especially on a four lap race. It's just too short to really get the job done. So we're going to whiz around this lap, or part of that lap, and see ourselves here at the beginning of lap number two. So you see a clear gap now between fourth and third. It really does look like fourth is going to be the best we can get, uh, barring any Shadow Realm-esque entries for the top three. Down to turn five, I'm going to try to not go into the back of him again. You see, I really do need to sort my breaking point out there, though, as uh, we slide wide and the Supra comes through on the inside given the space he's on the outside coming into the left hander and I didn't feel as I was alongside enough to sweep around the outside I can see the position down into sixth place so two supers ahead now and we have a Hyundai behind for good measure so we have to do some attacking we have to do some defending and now guy fourth he knows it's a defensive race he goes fully to the right hand side the German is going to move to the left you see I'm barely keeping up in the slipstream I am fully in the slipstream, but I can only just keep up. It's very difficult, I'm relying on a mistake. Almost at the back of the guy ahead. A bit of concertina effect there. Goes defensive on the uphill chicane. Normally take this flat out. I think you might have had to do a bit of a lift. I'm going to get the momentum here. I'm going to look to the right hand side. Is the space there? It is almost. He just sweeps around the outside. So close racing. But no contact being made. This is brilliant stuff. It's gone through the second to last turn. Or is this the second to last turn? I suppose this is the turn really, isn't it? Just feels like an exit for the corner uh, before it. Into the final corner, lap number two, halfway into the race with two to go. Can we go about gaining two positions here? Two Supras immediately in front of us. Across the line we go then, ending lap number two. On the brakes, on the 100 board, into turn one. Guy heads a little bit wide. Now look at this for analysis. I could go around the outside here, but you're never going to make it around the hairpin. So I just have to tuck in. Now the guy... The guy behind wanted to go up the inside. If you leave that space open, they're going to take the invitation. So I swept across to the right-hand side last minute, just covered him off, and then you form an orderly queue around the inside of the hairpin. So a little bit of tactical awareness there. So I had the momentum to go around the outside of the car ahead as he got a poor run, but I, I felt as though the best thing to do there is just actually go to the right-hand side, tuck in behind. You're not going to gain a position around the outside, so just make sure you keep your position rather than lose it. Up the inside into turn five is this move on. It is he's left the space. We're gonna look up the inside and we get the job done. So we reclaim our fifth position. He loses two positions there. Does the German in the Supra. So back into fifth. We have to kind of get back in touch with the Spaniard ahead. Just shows you how much time you can lose by fighting. But he's had a poor run. We are within the suck zone of eight tenths. So we'll just gain slightly down this back straight. 
as we now have the Hyundai for, for company behind. So an interesting race this, good race. Just shows you a couple of little mistakes, a couple of little things don't go your way and you start going backwards and then you really have to fight to get your position back. And this is why qualifying is so important. If I just qualified second or something, none of this would have happened, presumably. But uh, your life is a lot easier the further up the grid you are. Um, in most cases. Sometimes starting at the back can be easier than the middle though, I would say. But typically the further forward you are, the better your results will be. It's kind of simple really, um, in qualifying that is. So this weekend guys, I racing 24 hour. Uh, do look out for that on the channel. Big, big event. My first proper I racing event. I've done plenty of I racing races, well not plenty, but enough. But a full-scale 24-hour race with a with a good team is quite a daunting prospect. So do look out for that uh, this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, 24-hour race, of course, starting middle of the day Saturday and ending one day later, of course, because it's a 24-hour race, obviously. Okay, so right to the back of this guy, he's had a really poor kind of half a lap there. He was about a second ahead when I went for the move a lap ago on the, on the guy behind me when I moved back into fifth. Uh, but he's kind of just made quite a few little errors. Looking for the move here, the space opens up and it, it's kind of a weird corner that. Tried to park it on the apex, couldn't quite do it enough. So he comes back through with a cutback on the way out and gets his fourth place back. So there's definitely at least two more opportunities on this lap to go for a move. The first of which is at Big Banky Boy at the end of this straight here. As we're just coming onto it now. Into that slipstream, I'm within two tenths of a second, so the slipstream's gonna be a lot stronger from this kind of distance. I'm gonna fake him out, try to go left, open up that space, he doesn't quite fall for it. The space doesn't open up on the right-hand side. He, he knows how to defend. He goes narrow into the corner. He goes in quite early. I'll go in late, get a better exit. So now we could potentially go for a move. After this uphill chicane into the right-hander at the end of the, the following straight, let's see if there's a possibility. That super got so much power though, really difficult to overpower him as we come up the hill, even with the slipstream. I have to tuck in behind for now. Maybe one more opportunity left on the lap. I kind of take a really poor line through there, and you're just going to let him off the hook and give him a couple of tenths breathing space as we come into the final corner. And I pretty much have to send in the lunge from hell if I wanted to beat him from there. But it's not going to be on this occasion. It's going to be a fifth place back to where we started, but it was an amazing race, a really good race out, really enjoyed it as we come across the line to finish in fifth. So there we go, is it possible to beat that Supra? It definitely is, it's definitely uh, possible, but you do need a bit of a helping hand in terms of your qualifying grid slot and maybe a bit of luck uh, with who's in the race and whether or not they have an affinity with punting each other off. But that is it for today. Thank you so much for tuning in, thank you so much for watching as always. Really happy to hear that there's lots of new players getting into Grand Turismo Sport. Lots of players getting the PlayStation 4 because of these videos. And yeah, really, really great to hear that. Thank you so much for the support. Uh, really glad that you just enjoy the videos. But that's it from me today. Thank you so much for watching. Have a nice day, everyone. Goodbye. Well